in defi every, defi yields everybody gets excited with uh, multiple layers of yields and then you know you uh, collateralize one uh, asset and uh, get a, a loan on that borrow against that um, and use that for another uh, uh, yield opportunity um, as such so apart from liquid staking you also get collateralized loans so once you bunch all of that and like you said uh, sort of if, if you've got too many imbalances in your um, you know in your interest payout profiles then you could actually there you could find a very interesting use case for a structured product there right if we look at the the ipor rate it's very futuristic thinking not just because of what it is but also because it's uh it's something that assumes market maturity mm -hmm. and what we get in defi is we actually have the the market went from being uh actually more concentrated with just ave and compound to being more fragmented hmm. so now you know even in those defi credit markets we have ave compound we have fluid which is up and coming we have morpho which is a beast we have euler which just crossed a billion in deposits you have all kinds of different credit markets. And actually, this is really amazing, but it's really bad from a hedging perspective because, you know, going to that same uh, kind of market dynamics that I was analyzing, you know, in, in the unwinding of the, the LIBOR and, you know, all of these different benchmark rates, actually, this liquidity fragmentation, it works out probably worse for borrowers and lenders in DeFi across the board. However, that's also another opportunity. So... In building the IPOR protocol, we wanted to upgrade two parts. So, for example, in, in the peer-to-pool interest rate swap, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's assets that go on the balance sheet. So if we take, like, USDC, depositor comes in, that's underwriting a portfolio of derivatives, you know, both pay and receive fixed across multiple tenors. And then that's also getting plugged into um, a, a, an asset manager. So that was first going to Aave and Compound, uh, but it was pretty, it was pretty stagnant. Uh, one of the issues for those, every time that you have to change those routes, you have to upgrade the smart contract and you have to touch the vault storage. So that from a security standpoint, from a, from a time to market standpoint is, it's quite a pain. Uh, so we wanted to upgrade this asset management component and say, okay, we will go from Aave V2 and compound V2, V2 to the V3s. Let's say we want to add in Morpho and Euler and Fluid and all these different markets. How can we do it kind of seamlessly? How can we keep the integrity of the vault contract or of the uh, AMM contract, but how could we change the routes and, you know, basically make it modular and automatable. And we also wanted to create like this one click structured product suite. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we went into the, we went into, uh, you know, a couple of the uh, processes that we went through in building the IPOR protocol. So V1, we had a very kind of very hard coded construction you know, where you have to add one route at a time. V2, we use something much more modular called the diamond proxy to route throughout the entire in infrastructure. And that actually led to the design of Fusion, which is what we call now a, a, a polymorphic asset management protocol. Polymorphic in the fact that you can take a vault, a 4626 vault, you can add and change the routes without touching the internal storage and without upgrading the vault smart contract. So this is both secure and I would say it's a zero, zero to one innovation in DeFi. And so fusion is actually this one click structured product stack. So for example, you, you, you mentioned about, you know, like the rehypothecation of assets and routing them through different protocols. So, you know, if we look at like kind of vault protocols, like if we look at urine V1, uh, you had very much the same, well, we, we, we had the very, very much the same issues as Yearn V1. You build out a new connector, you have to remove a connector, you have to build, you have to upgrade. And, you know, the moving of assets is quite kind of manual. And if you look on like the other side of something like a, like a, a, a Veda or a sommelier, it's a very high trust barrier because you have calls that are coming from off chain. They're going through some side chain validation, but it's, it's unbounded. And so it's a very high trust barrier. And again, I like to go back to the uh, don't trust, verify. So in Fusion, the whole idea is that you can add or remove a root as simply as adding or removing a fuse from an engine, right? 
Uh, and that's made possible by the vault architecture. So this whole idea of fusion is actually how we can do this kind of one-click structured products that you mentioned, which is take debt from here, deploy it here. Uh, let's say even against that collateral that you deposit, you can borrow another asset and get access here and do a rates arbitrage while yeah. actually farming optimally. So all of these strategies, are, we have different people building them right now on Fusion. Mm. And then it all ties back together. So in the structured product suite, now we have in design the, um, the interest rate swaps, not only for the IPOR indices, but also for the IBT or the interest bearing token of a single market. And that means that these will also be kind of one-click structured products uh, where you can do these kind of leverage looping uh, across different structured products. You know, there's this USDC optimizer, which is going and getting the, the I would say, the best of the low-risk yield across Aave, Compound, Morpho, Fluid, Gearbox, and it's just doing the optimized allocation. And you yeah. hook an interest rate swap up to that particular interest-bearing token, and you now yeah. have your most liquid, uh, basically, fixed income deposit. So hmm. all of these pieces you can kind of put together. And yeah. we also have people on this optimizer that are building on top of that. So for example, we have uh, some of the Uni, Uniswap V4 teams that are building, you know, as part of their hooks, they're building them into the optimizer. So for example, you have someone with a DEX LP, that's let's say USDC, USDT. You have hmm. multiple ticks. And when that tick is basically, um, uh, you know, it, when it's out of range, they drop those assets into the optimizer. And when mm -hmm. it gets back in range, they put it back. So this whole kind of composability and the, the, the money Legos, before it was a narrative, and now it's becoming more and more real. So this is something quite interesting. We have yield-bearing stable coins and different banking products that are building on top of the optimizers. So yeah, this is, this is uh, I mean, th this is quite exciting.